Okay, so here I am in macOS, and I'm actually using the latest one as of this recording, which is El Capitan. And let's go ahead, and I already downloaded Sublime Text, so let's go ahead and double-click that and install that real quick. Very easy, it just opens up this uh, window, we just drag it to my Applications folder, and after about a second, it's done. Just verify that it's actually in here, it is. So I could close that, close that, and go ahead uh, eject the mount and actually now if I do command space and start typing sublime it will come up sublime text right there I said yes I want to open it for the first time and actually I'm going to drag it right next to chrome that I already installed okay so this way I could actually quit at this point and the next thing we want to do is we want to install git so we're going to go ahead and install the latest version of git and we'll go to Google and we'll just search for download git for Mac. And this the first link comes up. That's exactly what we need. And hopefully we'll start downloading it about a second. Or we could just click ourselves and download it ourselves. Okay, so it's started to download. Okay, so once it's done, go ahead and open it up. Double click on it. And now we have to Double click the package installer. And it says here that our security preferences at the moment is such that we're not allowed to install anything that is not from the Mac App Store. That's not a problem. All we're gonna do is just click OK. It will go to our preferences and we'll go to security. Right here, allow apps downloaded from. Well, we really need to have it anywhere. So we'll go ahead and unlock that. And we'll click anywhere. It says yes, I do want it from anywhere. After we install, we can always put it back to the original setting so you know we're not unsecure. And now we could do double click on that file and go ahead and go through the prompts, install, give it the password, admin password, and we're done. So now we have to just to double check that 2.6.3 is actually installed and is in our command line. So we'll go ahead and do command space and we'll pull up the terminal. And in the terminal, we'll say git dash dash version and it's 2.6.3 which is exactly what we need okay so git is installed the next step is to install browser sync well in order to install browser sync we first need to install node.js so we'll go ahead and go to say download download node.js for mac and here it is and it says here mac installer will go mature and dependable Okay, once that's done, let's go ahead and open it up and double click it. To install, we'll go through the prompts. Yes, we agree. Install. You can give it the admin password. And we're done. And it just says here that we have to make sure that uh, user local bin is in our path. Well, let's go ahead and uh, make sure of that. We'll go to the terminal. Well, actually, what we'll do is we'll restart the terminal. It's always a good idea to restart the terminal after things like that install. And we'll say node dash dash version. And that's the right one. And another one is npm, which stands for node package manager dash dash version, which is actually what we're really after right now. And it seems like that's working as well. We'll go ahead and echo the path just like they told us to to make sure and sure enough user local bin is inside our path so we're good to go so to install browser sync let's go ahead and google it first browser sync and we should get the browser syncs web page and it tells us in order to install it we need to do npm install dash g browser sync and dash G just means globally, not just for our user, for, but for all users. Well, we're going to go ahead and copy this command. But since there's some new things that came in uh, Mac OS El Capitan, we're going to actually do a sudo command instead of just directly installing. So we'll do a sudo npm install dash D browser sync. We'll go ahead and execute that. It's going to ask us for the password. We'll give it the password. And hopefully this will install just fine. Okay, there were some warnings, and it's also telling us we should install developer tools. We'll go ahead and click OK, because that's something we're going to need. Uh, hopefully you already have that installed for you, but if you don't, 
this is something that you'll definitely need as you keep developing. Okay, it says software was installed, and let's go ahead and double check that our browser sync actually got installed. Let's do browser sync dash dash version. And sure enough, that's working. Now, I can't guarantee that all these steps are going to be exactly the same because depending on what you actually have already installed on your machine, these steps might be might be a little bit different. But that's about what you're going to get. There's some things that came out as error, but it seems like Browser Sync actually installed after all, so we could use it. So let's go ahead and try it out. Let's go and open where already in our terminal. Let's go ahead and make a directory called test site. Okay, and we'll open our Sublime text and we'll save this page. We'll save this page inside our test site folder. It's users Yaakov test site and we'll call it, we'll just call it index.html. Okay, and now we could actually have a shortcut here inside Sublime if we do HTML and then control space, which will give us a quick uh, template of a page. We'll say hello Coursera and we'll just give it one h1. We'll say again, hello Coursera. Okay, we'll save that page. So now, what Browser Sync is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to constantly have or be constant kind of a little server for us that we could see our page in the browser and at the same time as we edit our page, it will update everything that we're editing straight in the browser. So the way we would do that is we could issue a command. We'll first We'll go, we'll switch to test site. We'll cd into test site, we'll clear that. There's our index.html. So we'll issue a command called browser sync and say start, say server in server mode. And we'll give it another option called directory. It will actually serve up the entire directory, not just a particular file. And we'll tell it what type of files to watch for that if any of those files change, I want you to go ahead and refresh the browser. And we'll put a star, meaning I want any type of files that say that, that are going to change in this directory or any subdirectory, I want you to go ahead and reload the things in the browser. So when I press enter, you'll see that it's already running a local server on port 3000, and there's our index.html. Now, if we didn't put the dash dash directory, I believe it will it would uh, go right away to, or try to go right away to the index.html. But since we could have multiple files here, I'll just leave it at that. And when we click index.html, you see it's right there, uh, it's now working. Okay, so in part three of this lecture, we're actually going to go, go ahead and use browser sync, and I'll demo to you how we're gonna use it in this course. And we're also gonna go through some basics of Git and how to deploy to GitHub to host your website.